First, though, we want to also ask you about the alt-right. In a recent speech, Hillary Clinton mm -hmm. basically referred to you and other people, didn't name you directly, but she um, quoted the Wall Street Journal. She said, alt-right is short for alternative right. Mm -hmm. The Wall Street Journal describes it as a loose but organized movement, mostly online, that, quote, rejects mainstream conservatism, promotes nationalism, and views on immigration and multiculturalism as threats to white identity. The de facto merger between Breitbart and the Trump campaign represents a landmark achievement for the alt-right. Are you the alt-right? And what is the alt-right? <laughs> No, I mean, I've never identified as the alt-right. The press seems determined to crown me the queen of it. Um, all I've done is give them a fair hearing in the press. I think that white identity and white nationalism is a little misleading. I think it's more accurate to say that the alt-right cares about Western supremacy rather than white supremacy. It cares about Western values. It cares about liberal, capitalist, Western democracy, democratic values, freedom, equality, that kind of thing. And it sees, you know, various threats to those on various fronts. So when Donald Trump talks about preventing... Uh, immigrants preventing Muslims from coming into the country. Mm -hmm. A lot of people see that as racist. You don't think that's racist? They're entitled to, but all I can tell you is, as a gay man, I'm quite reassured by Donald Trump's, uh, you know, entreaties toward American values and his skepticism about Islamic immigration. When I mean, Hillary Clinton quotes my headlines, give, you know, um, and, uh, and, and suggests that this is some kind of sinister, dark underbelly of American society... What do you society, mean by American values? Well, the First and Second Amendment, freedom of speech, free expression, the, you know, the right to be, do, and say whatever you want. These are the, the values that have made America the greatest country in the history of human civilization. Civilization. These are values that are not compatible with some of the Islamic immigration that we see in Europe. And, you know, I'm, I, I, guess, do, I, guess, I, you, I guess I'm over here as a warning from Europe saying, please don't go the same way as Germany and the UK. If you are or if you're not part of the, of the described alt-right, do you as a gay man feel comfortable in it that the, that the people who embrace... Uh, other uh, yeah. other elements of what we just described as the, the alt-right. Question. You know what I'm driving yeah, at. Yeah, I understand here. the question. Do you feel comfortable well, the, in it? The press seems determined to label the alt-right this misogynist, hateful, racist, homophobic, uh, anti-Semitic movement, and yet at the same time tries to crown, you know, a gay Jew who never shuts up about his black boyfriends as the leader of it. Something isn't quite right Can here. you concede that, that the alt-right actually attracts those groups of people? Uh, I think there's some overlap on the okay. very, very fringes. And I wrote, um, I wrote a very good guide to the alt-right for anyone who's really interested in this. I think it's the only, and I say it's very good, but I think it's the only example in journalism really so far of somebody trying to give an accurate and fair guide to the contours of the movement rather than virtue signaling about saying, oh, racism is bad. Yeah, we know that. I want to know what this movement actually consists of. And so I wrote um, an establishment conservative's guide to the alt-right. You know, what it is you're getting wrong that the new Republican base, the Trump guys, the alt-right, the, you know, the, the, the uh, Twitter kind of meme and troll brigade, what it is that they're seeking, what they're searching for, what they like and what they don't like. What are they, search um, what are they searching for? Well, I think there's a, a, a sense, aside from the policy positions, and I do think that um, Trump is tapping into something with the immigration stuff, with trade, and, and Ann Coulter, for instance, her analysis is that people like Trump for the policies. Mine is a little different. Um, I think that people are getting a little sick on all sides of the political divide of the nannying safe space culture from the left, of the language policing, saying everything is sexist, everything is racist, everything is homophobic when we know it isn't. Um, and that kind of chilling effect on culture, on freedom of expression, even on journalism, has started to become very obvious. And I, I don't think voters like it what, very much. What would America look like with an ascendant alt-right, with, with a Trump in the White House mm -hmm. and a Mr. Bannon as the chief of staff? And, it would be so and, much more and, fun. It well, I mean, it might well be. And it might. And laughter it would be and more memes. spontaneous, let's Pepe say. In the White would House. it be meaner? It would be fantastic. It might be a little meaner. But we could do with a bit of meanness in American society. This cult of being nice all the time and not saying what we really think, not saying what's actually happening. I mean, the reason that people like me get upset about political correctness is that it kills, is that it results in horrible things happening, whether it's San Bernardino or Sandy Hook or whatever. People say, oh, well, we knew, but we didn't go there. We didn't say anything because we didn't want to seem racist. Um, you know, uh, um, what's the what? Rotherham in the UK, right? 1,400 young girls were raped um, over 10 years. And the government report said that the reason nobody reported on this, the reason nobody did anything about it, is that the police and the authorities were scared of seeming Islamophobic because those 1,400 girls were all raped by Pakistani rape gangs. That is an example of political correctness that, with victims, you know, with real-world consequences. And that's, you know, uh, the serious end of political correctness. That's the real end. Aside from the memes and the jokes and the meanness on Twitter, that's the kind of stuff that I really object to. And that's the kind of stuff I think that a lot of Trump voters don't like either. Speaking of Twitter. Yes. Board meeting today. <laughs> there's talk that they may sell the company or they're going to try to well, convince... Well, they could try. I mean, who would want it? 
I mean, who would want Twitter? And, and, you know, to say nothing of what, you know, look, Twitter is systematically having a go at conservatives. There's even chatter online of them having a race problem. You know, there are people saying that Twitter has a race problem. It doesn't like white people very much. It's got this black supremacist, Black Lives Matter hashtag up in its San Francisco offices. You may find that argument a little far-fetched, but there are plenty of people making it. Um, you know, that, that, that raises the specter of antitrust, you know, and Cruz would probably be up for that. Oh, I mean, come you know, on. there's all sorts oh, of things that, there's all sorts of things that could happen. Jack Dorsey is very clearly checked out of this business. He doesn't care. He's not interested in the business is tanking. They're losing their users. And as I spoke to you about um, at one of the conventions, you know, my analysis of Twitter is that the conventional wisdom is 180 degrees wrong on this. Um, everybody, the media and journalists, everybody is telling us that the problem with Twitter is too much trolling, too much meanness, too much quote unquote abuse and harassment. I see the problem as exactly the reverse. When Twitter started cracking down on free speech, the platform started failing. And that is the history of social networks. That rule has never been broken in the history of Was social networks. Was there a single tweet or a series of tweets that got you banned from Twitter and in, in your version of what could be a more fun world. <laughs> <laughs> would those tweets have been okay? I guess they would have been. I mean, I said, I think I, no, I told the Wall Street Journal that Leslie Jones, um, the subject of the new Ghostbusters movie, looked remarkably like one of my ex-boyfriends, which she does. Um, and I said that it was nice that they cast a hot black dude in the movie. Um, you know, these are the kind of like, oh, okay, fine, a gay, a gay guy's catty, you know, stop the presses. Uh, this is not <laughs> a reason to get somebody off Twitter. They did it for political reasons. They've been waiting for an excuse for a long time. What I actually did was wrote a very long, very good, very brutal and bitchy, but I thought ultimately quite fair review of a very bad feminist movie and that because it had a, a what do you a think of colin kaepernick oh god i'm so bored about hearing about this silly grandstanding you know those those moments when you know you have the national anthem when everybody comes together despite their political differences race gender you know politics whatever those are the moments when you're supposed to be respectful of your fellow players of the audience of everybody around you come together for that moment and say okay this is these are the things we believe in you know let's go do this but guys. that seems to run against yeah, your I thought think that, it's that contradictory. seems to run against, uh, run against your thought that we should be less respectful and less Oh, no, I think we should be hugely uh, respectful of free speech and freedom of Chrissy expression. Chrissy, in a way, you know. No, no, no. Look, I don't want to get too uptight about it, because yeah, yeah, yeah. I don't care about, about some sportsman, as I, as I started out to say. I don't care about some sportsman You're bored having, with him. having a little, like, tantrum, hissy-fit spectacle, OK? What I, what I would like, though, is that when our sportsmen and celebrities do things like this and all eyes are on them afterwards, I would like them to actually say something of substance, like have a real argument, rather than just these lefty talking points. And by the way, the reason sales of his shirt are going up because, is because people are burning them. But you do support his right to do what he did. Of course. I just think he's an idiot. Hey, CNBC fans. Thanks for checking out our YouTube channel. Here you're going to find videos packed with all of the information that you need to be smarter about your finances. You can subscribe by clicking right here and click on all the videos around me or the eye right here to watch the latest from CNBC. Thanks for watching.